Okay. You, you guys can hear me, yeah? Yes. Yeah, carry on. Okay, so yeah, uh, I got some slides here uh, for this chapter visualization. And I have uh, the uh, answers to the uh, exercises as well as an RMD file, which we can work on, but we can quickly go through these slides. And then I don't know how to do the exercises. Shall I just start from the exercise number one, or do you guys have some preference to just look through together to some questions? which you might have problems with. What, what do you guys think? So uh, I, I don't know, I think for, 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 for my, from what I think we could, you could just randomly start with some two or three numbers. Um, okay. Then people can point out the next numbers after that. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna share it anyway. So it got, I think I got most, uh, all of them, I think. And uh, then you guys can just practice using the in our studio. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it shouldn't be even if we couldn't finish all of them today. So you guys can practice on it on your own. So yeah, let's dive in in this visualization. Uh, so as you know, that visualization is uh, the the key step in analytical process. And if it's done well, then you can. Uh, it will allow you to reveal some patterns in your data uh, and communicate insights with your uh, uh, audience. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a very important first step. It's always good to visualize the data before you do any kind of uh, analysis or statistical modeling. Just uh, using a, um, you mean like a basic histogram, you can see what the data look like and what are the distributions. So it's always good to plot first before you do any analysis. So here is just the link for ggplot2 and some uh, uh, useful uh, cheat sheets which you can use for your reference. Uh, okay, so what does ggplot stand for? I mean, I'm just gonna start from the very basic so everyone can uh, you know, understand even if somebody are not used to or they have some experience with ggplot2. I'm just gonna start from the beginning. So the gg is in the ggplot2 stand for the grammar of graphics, which is a system which allow you to um, create graphs. You know, like um, you you add layers by layers different functions, and uh, they it will uh, change the plot uh, up to that point. And you can use a plus sign to add different graphs. So for example, this is a general template for uh, creating a graph. So here, these bracketed sections in this plot, we can, uh, you know, we can put our data frame here, then we can put a geom function, specify if we want a bar plot, we can put geom underscore bar, for example. And then we can specify some of the aesthetics, uh, for example, the, what variable will go on the x-axis and what variable will go on the y-axis, and some other additional positioning and uh, coordinate function uh, apart from that to, to change the, the graphs. So yeah, we can uniquely describe any plot uh, using a combination of these seven parameters. So this is just an example. Uh, although I, I think I'm using a different data set here, it's the empty cars, but uh, just to show you an example how to create a basic uh, scatter plot here. So you always have to use the library function to initiate the ggplot uh, package and after you install that. So the installation is just a, a one-off uh, process or computer you use. And then after every session of R, you have to use the library ggplot2 and then as we mentioned in the last slide the the, the template you use ggplot and then you give your data name you don't have to specify data equal but i would suggest to use it when you are you know uh, learning in the beginning and then geom underscore point is the geom function we use for uh, creating the scatter plot and then the aesthetics, you use X and Y and you give the variables that you want on the X axis and the variable you want on the Y axis. And then there are some, you know, optional 
labs which you can use to uh, to create titles for the x and y axis. So yeah, this gave us the uh, the weight of, for example, in this data set, the empty car. So you have the weight of the car engine, I guess, on the x axis, and the miles per gallon on the y axis. And you can see that if car has a bigger engine, then uh, the fuel efficiency is uh, less. Okay, this is just an example. <clears throat> so R has uh, several systems uh, for making graphs. For example, we have the, <coughs> excuse me, the base R graphic system, and then we have the grid system, which uh, is implemented through the, the grid package. And we also have the a lattice package. And finally, we got the ggplot2, uh, which is the most elegant and the most versatile. And uh, most data scientists use ggplot2. And it, it uh, as I mentioned in the last slide, it implements the grammar of graphics, which is a coherent system for describing and building graphs. And if you want to, more, to know more about the theoretical underpinnings of ggplot2, you can read this <coughs> paper here. Okay, and so why should we use ggplot2? Uh, there are so many, uh, you know, benefits of using this, just a few here, uh, because of the default output is much nicer than the base graph and it, it create automatic legends and colors for you. And you have a uh, option to store the ggplot2 objects for modification or future recall. And also there's lots of user uh, community uh, where you can get help on that, for example, on Strike Overflow or Twitter. And lots of extension and nice saving options. So there are many benefits of using ggplot2. Um, then it comes, uh, so I'm going just um, section by section in the chapter here in the book. So then we comes to the uh, aesthetic mapping. So is the aesthetic is the visual property of the objects in your plot. So it, it includes things like the size, shape, and color of your, of your points. And uh, we can also map the aesthetics to in our plot to a variable in the data set. So I'll show you an example in the next slide. For example, if we want to map the, the points uh, in our um, scatter plot to the class variable in the data set. So here I'm using the, the MPG data set. So we give geom underscore point, that's for creating the scatter plot, that's the geom function, and then we mapping equal aesthetics. And we, here we give the X, uh, X is the, I think this is the engine size here, displacement, I guess. And Y is the HWY is the um, fuel efficiency on highway in miles per gallon. And then we want the color of our points to be you use the class variable, which is the different class of vehicle uh, cars in this data set. And when we create the plot, we can see that, uh, you know, the different, uh, the unique class of uh, different cars being uh, assigned a different unique no, uh, color uh, by the uh, ggplot. And we can see here that SUV, I think is these here, which we know that they are bigger uh, cars and they have big engines and they have uh, their fuel efficiency uh, in miles per gallon is less. Um, and here, I think these are these two seater cars, and we know that two seater cars are usually small cars, they're like sports car. They have big engine, but small body. Uh, so they have really good fuel efficiency as well. Um, then uh, specifying, so geom is the uh, geometrical object that the plot uses to represent your data. And there are different, um, you know, objects uh, in the ggplot uh, too. For example, the geom underscore point for uh, drawing individual points in the scatter plot, and geom line for the line charts, uh, and similarly geom uh, call or geom underscore bar as well. You can use that as well for drawing uh, a bar chart. We'll see a couple of examples of this in the next slides and some other there as well. So this is creating a simple bar chart, which is 
very simple to do it in ggplot. So you do your bit. Hi, sorry. Yeah, can you go back to the previous slide, please? I'm sorry. I'm too quick. Sorry, I'm just. No, I just I want, want to add something. Um, yeah. So the first two points, the obvious distinction between plots is the geometric object that they include. And ggplot use a number jump function. What does this statement mean? So we have these number of like different geom functions. Like if you want to create a line chart, you use geom underscore line. If you want to use a bar chart, you know, or column chart, you use geom underscore column yeah. or geom underscore bar. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I understand what you mean. Yeah, so these are different, these are different functions we use for creating different type of graphs, like you know, so you can just start with the geom and then underscore the name of the, the function you want. If you want a so bar chart, you use bar, bar and yeah. Add the functions, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so here, uh, you know, if we give data and we say geom underscore bar, like we, here, we want a bar chart here. So we use geom underscore bar. And then in the mapping, we only, if you only give the x axis, we, ha we haven't given any y axis here. We just say we want the different curve sizes in this diamond data set because in the diamond data set, there are different uh, types of diamonds and they are, uh, you know, uh, they have different curve, I think, categories. And, uh, you know, the, the ideal and premium, very good and fair. I don't know what that means, but there are different cut um, variables in this data set. So we can see that most of the diamonds are, I think they are the good quality cut, and these uh, there are a smaller number with the uh, low quality cut, but more with the ideal or the, the high quality cuts in the, is the data set. But if you look here, we give an x axis equal cut, which is here is showing us, but the y axis is say count. But mm -hmm. uh, count is not a variable in our data set. So how, how did the geom underscore bar give us count? And that's because the geom underscore bar has a default, uh, you know, um, you call it the stat or the statistical transformation function, which is count. So it's basically just count how many rows in this data have a fair cut variable and how many have a good. And it's just give you the count on the y axis by default, yeah? So if, if this is what you want, then yeah, if you just want to count how many, uh, you know, how, how many, uh, the, the frequency of each cut in the data set, then you can just use that. However, there will be, uh, <clears throat> instances that you want to have a different variables on your y axis and you don't want the count then you have to specify the um the y axis uh, explicitly uh, i'll show you there on the other uh, next slide i guess i think but this is how the statistical transformation work uh, which is short for stat in the geom underscore bar so when you give the geom underscore bar and you, you are using your data set, so what it does, it uses the stat underscore count, which is the default uh, <clears throat> function there in the geom underscore bar. And it kind of transforms your data in the different cut categories and it, it count how many have fair and how many have good. And it gives you the count of each uh, category. And then it creates it use it use the, that transform data to create your uh, bar your bar chart and on the x axis it give you the cut the different categories and on the y axis the count of each category in your data so this is by the default function in geom underscore bar uh, and as i say if you want to um, use a different variable in your data on the y axis then we have to specify the stat function equal to identity, yeah? So, and we, we give the y axis, for example, if we using the same data and we want the x uh, axis to be the different cut categories and on the y axis, we want the price, then I would say that stat equal identity. That means we are telling geom underscore bar to not use count on the y axis, but rather use uh, the price variable 
on the y axis okay so it will just give you then the different uh, categories of the cut and the price i think is in millions and there is another way to use it without uh, specifying the stat equal identity and you can just use geom underscore col geom underscore column and for this one we don't have to specify stat equal identity because its default is stat equal identity so we can just instead of geom underscore bar we can say geom underscore call and then we give the mapping and the x and y variable this is just i given because there were too many zeros so i given to give it to change the, the axis to to give the uh, you know uh, show the m here instead of the six zeros so you can ignore that but it's just a good thing to know about how to transform your uh, y-axis um, so is that okay so far yeah sure yeah the next slide is uh, a positional adjustment so we can also we can color the bar chart using the color aesthetic or more usefully we can use the um the fill so because if we use the color here color equal cut it's not very useful because it doesn't color the these bars it just shows like kind of these edges which is not useful however if we use the um the mapping geom underscore bar and then we give x equal the cut and fill equal cut then the different cut sizes will be assigned a different uh, uh you know unique color and these bars will be uh, the same color of the different cuts so um, um, yeah with the color is it the same thing uh, i cannot differentiate between the color is it the same color in the color the bars are they of the same color or stuff like that which one the the second the second the this one, one the, the first one yeah yeah they i think you can't see it uh these you know the legends they have at the edges they have border different colors ah, but you can't okay. see it yeah you okay. can't see it that's why it's it's not very useful to use color equal cut if you want to these bars to represent the different uh colors uh and you know for different cut categories then you can just use fill equal color yeah e equal ah, okay. fill equal cut so then this is this is more useful than using that one so it's only the edges that makes it different using color right yes yeah the fill will uh, will fill the whole you know the bar the columns and mm -hmm. the color is just you can't see it it won't fill the columns so that's mm -hmm. why it's not useful okay um this is also this is another useful uh the grammar of graphics is really powerful so you can use also like a different uh, variable in your data set to uh, to stack upon each other in the bar like here you know like in the last one we just use fill equal cut so it's just uh, the the color the color is being assigned to those cut categories but here you can also give fill equal a different uh, you know variable like categorical variable and then it will color a different clarity you know clarity is another variable in this data set uh, and so it will stack upon each other but even i mean this is quite good but you can't differentiate between the different clarity categories here like you can't tell how many you know the count is for for example this one i1 how many are there so it's not it's uh it's good for like kind of presentation but you can't differentiate between them uh and if you don't want these kind of bar charts you don't want the stacking to be performed automatically then you can change them using a positional adjustment so you can use i think the position here so you use fill equal clarity and position equal dodge and then it will kind of rather than stacking it upon each other it will put it beside each other and I think it's easy for compa making comparison between different uh, clarity categories. So there are other um, positions as well, but uh, I think uh, I haven't included them in the slides. If you go to the exercises, there are a few questions on them. 
thing we can we understand, but it's just like you can hear position equal fill or position equal, uh, I think, identity. So yeah, so you only have to change the things in these uh, quotation marks here. Um, is that clear here? Yeah. Yeah, so here is this the stacking, which is not very useful, yeah. but this is- But this, this is one good. is useful, right? Yeah, because you can tell it's not yeah. on top of each other, it's on, inside each other, and you can tell, you can compare the different categories easily. Yeah, so the stacking is not terribly useful at all, I guess. Yes, yeah, I, my, in most cases, yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. And then we come to the coordinate system. Uh, so it is also possible to specify a plot coordinate system, which is uh, used to organize the geometric objects. So coordinate systems are specified with functions uh, whose names start with co or underscore, like in the geom underscore bar or geom underscore smooth, we have these functions for the different coordinate systems. So coordinate underscore flip or coord underscore fixed. So this is, it will depend on uh, what you want to do with the X and Y coordinate system. And it's, it's useful, I think, uh, we need to, we, we can only focus on this one, which is, I think if you're just learning, so we should focus on coordinate underscore flip or maybe coordinate underscore polar as well. Uh, it, they are useful. I think I have an example that uh, when will we need them to, to use them. So, okay, yeah. So for example, if you have a data which have uh, labels and you uh, create your graph or bar chart and the labels are overlapping each other or you have a data with many variables or they, they might have long names. So they might overlap each other. So uh, to fix that, then we need the chord, chord underscore flip to you know, flip this uh, X axis here. And now you can see they are clearly visible, you can read it. So this is uh, where they are useful. So if you use till that, those two lines, so you get this, uh, this uh, box plot, uh, where these uh, labels overlap each other. But if you use, just add this one at the end, chord underscore flip, so it will flip these axes, and then you can see it clearly. So this is uh, one of the instances where they can be useful. Uh, another uh, option I think is not in, given in this book, but I'll show you that you can also, uh, you know, you make the angle of these uh, uh, labels like 45 angle, and then you can use, uh, you will see it clearly. Uh, I mean, this data has not many, uh, you know, variables, so it's okay, but you might have many, maybe 20 or uh, variables, so then it's useful to. Uh, you can use the uh, team uh, axis dot text equal element underscore text, and then you can use a 45 degree angle, and you give H just which is for horizontal adjustment equal one. So this is something you have to it will you have to just play with it. You know, sometimes you might need 0 0.5 here, sometimes you might need one. You have to just play with it, and which one looks perfect to you you can put a value here you can start with 0 0.5 for example and if it's looking good to you then you can leave it 0 0.5 so this is something you have to play with uh, so yeah you can change the angle and that's that's one way to deal with the overlapping levels and then we come to facets uh, which is a, a way of grouping a uh, visualized can. yeah yeah, just before we continue, before we continue to facets, um, just to mention, if you go slightly back uh, to the flip. Yeah. Uh, a little bit behind where you had the code flip. Sorry? Where oh, the flip. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Code flip. Yeah. yeah, so in, in the latest version of uh, ggplot, ggplot2, they mm -hmm. sort of uh, encoded the code flip in it. So you could actually change the y and the y and x variables, and it would do the flip for you. 
which okay which is oh yeah okay so you mean to uh put the x yeah okay but even then uh yeah okay you can do that as well yeah okay but if you have a uh, more variables than both then i don't know okay x and y so you mean okay. to give uh the um h w y into x and class into y yes. okay yeah yeah okay that you can do as well i didn't think of that but no it's just a, it's a less re re release this year okay yeah please can you share our the source so that we can check it oh, oh, you oh yeah definitely it? definitely i can oh, thank you. I can share the release notes okay so the facets are you know a way of grouping your uh, variables into separate clocks for example here in, in our mpg data uh, when we give the uh, class so we have different classes of car and they have different categories like suvs and pickup and you can uh, you know divide them you have you can create a separate plot for each of them and it allows us to view a separate plot for each unique value in a categorical variable uh, if you want to uh, divide these uh, you know facet a plot by a single variable then you use facet underscore wrap like we did here so we give the data and then we give the geom underscore point for a scatter plot and we give the x and y x uh, variables and then we do we want to uh, facet on class variable so you you give this squiggle and squiggle this formula and class and you give the number of rows like how many rows it should print those different plots if you give one this will be just one row of uh, you know uh, seven plots yeah but so if you give two i have a question yeah. here. Uh, forgive me i'm totally new to this stuff so i'm not quite sure i understand what this tilde means it's they say it's formula but i'm really struggling to really understand what it's using. Well, well this, this formula is not kind of some mathematical formula. For formula, I mean that you just give the, this, this is how the, this function works. So you have to use this squiggle and you give the, the variable which you want to facet on your, your plottings, yeah? So, so for if I remove the tilde sign, only the class, because I want to facet around the class, it will not work what it won't it won't work yeah it okay. won't work yeah so this is just what the uh you need the arguments it takes this facet underscore wrap if you want to uh if you are not sure what goes there you can always use our studio and you use a yeah. you know how to use fun yeah. the help function yeah? yeah so you just use a uh, you know um question mark and facet underscore wrap and it will give you and it with an example uh, okay. so yeah you have to use this and this if you are using a one variable like we are here using mm -hmm. so you can use facet underscore wrap yeah okay if you are using two variables yeah then i will show you in the next slide ah, okay. i think it's uh, you use facet underscore grid ah. here and then you put this squiggle in between those variables name yeah and then it will uh, it will give you these um, you know the x and y axis, and then you have the drive these. Uh, uh, I don't know what this means in the data. I think it's drive uh, drive car or something. So you have in that one in that variable you have three categories, mm -hmm. and in the cylinder you have four categories. So there are cars with four, five, six, or eight cylinders, and uh, I think rear rear drive and front drive and for drive, I guess. So you have these. So these comes on then on, on these sides, x and y axis, and the rows and columns. So what does this interpret? I mean, I I, I do not understand what the graph is saying in this way. Like the so previous one, yeah. But this one with the two variable is like um, I don't know. So if you want to see, like uh, in the displacement categories. For example, here you have the engine size, mm -hmm. and you have you want to split them uh, among the different, uh, you know, the drive, uh, you know, DRV categories of your data. I think is it will make sense if it's if if you understand the data, like what okay. these variables means, or if you have your own data, mm -hmm. then it will make sense to you. 
so here you basically splitting these x and y variables in these other two variables and see how many of the uh, drive uh, you know car, drive car i guess uh, are in the you know they have a different engine size and what is their fuel efficiency which is here on the hwy so there are some of them are empty because we have no uh, values for these that's why they are empty okay. okay and this one doesn't have the number of rows at the previous one where we have n rows 42 um, no i i'm not sure if you you might be able to give it in this one um, I'm not actually sure of that, but I think uh, it's just create, uh, it, I think it will just start on the different line if, if there is no space for it. But um, I think if you use the help function, facet underscore grid, then you can get some more information on it. I mean, I haven't used it personally, but this is how you can, this is just an example that if you want to, uh, you know, divide, the facets in different variables. So you give the X and Y and then you facet it on these two variables. Okay, you good. Can, yeah, I mean, it, this is a bit complicated, but uh, um, I think, yeah, the different, reading different the documents for it will help, it will show you different examples. Uh, but I haven't seen, uh, sorry? The chat. the chat is disabled, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, so I think that was the last slide. Uh, in the facet, I mean, I think I have only, I have covered most of the sections in this uh, chapter. It's only the geometric, oh, I, I covered the geometric object as well, actually, yeah. So that's all the slides. And then uh, I think we can go to the exercises. Let me see. So uh, we're in the chat now. I don't, I don't know. My security was blocking it. Oh. Yeah, um, yeah, the chat works now. So thank you. Cool. Uh, I just wanted to say it was a really good presentation. Um, like you summarized. It was a bit quick, sorry, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you managed to like cover every sub topic, every sub section yeah. of the chapter in 30 minutes. And that's like amazing. Yeah, I really enjoy it. Too. Well, well done. I mean, it's not like we can spend the whole day talking doing the presentation. Yeah, I know. There, there is so many, I mean, yeah. options in the ggplot, but you, you cannot cover it. But this is just a basic idea. And uh, I mean, if you guys uh, okay, then we can, I can share my uh, studio screen and uh, we can go through the exercises. Yeah, but, but first, uh, does anyone have uh, any questions? So oh, yeah, um, I didn't have a question, but I just kind of wanted to summarize a bit. Um, I didn't get a chance to go through the chapter myself. It's, it's a new job, lots of stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> basically, just to I, I did sort of like some things did click for me, even then, even though I was just like. Uh, but basically, like, if, can you put up like a? Oh yeah, I, I can see a formula. Uh, like a ggplot formula now. So basically like, okay, you have ggplot um, and then in the first line, it's the data set. So data equals mpg. Then yeah. all, I'm just summarizing it. So please correct me if yeah. I'm wrong. Um, sure. And then you have this thing like geom point, geom column, geom line. That's the kind of uh, graph. The yes, the different graphs that you might need, yeah. So the choice of plot that you're making. And yeah. then mapping equals aesthetic, mapping equals ace, it's like it's always there. And then you have the yeah. x axis and y axis. And if you yeah. want color or if you want something weird, like different, that's when you do a plus color is like, yeah. like plus these ones there. Mm, 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 no, no, the, the color is inside the. the, the yeah, the, yeah. It, it, it's in that, it's still in that line. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you want, if you want a variable in your data, uh, to uh, to be used for the color, then it will be under this aesthetic, like here, color equal cut. Right. But if you have a scatter plot and you want the the points to be a like a blue color or red color, yeah. then that then you have to put this color under outside this bracket. Like you have to put a comma here, 
mm -hmm. then you say color equal blue. I think in the exercises there are questions on it, then you will understand more if yeah. you do the exercise. And then like in the third line, uh, stuff that kind of comes after. So these two lines are kind of like the basic, like, you know, it's like yeah. Yeah. the ones after that were basically what we did were like facets, right. which were like multiple yeah. plots. It can be in rows, it can be like a grid. Uh, yeah. Nice. You have this, and then it's like a coordinate thing. That kind of just kind of went over my head. Yeah, I mean the coordinate. If you want, if you want to flip the coordinates, you can just will go chord and just go flip. And then, like you have the plus sign, and you can add many layers to it. You know, you can add labs to it. You can add then themes. So there are so many. So yeah, but this is just to show you to create a basic uh, graph and. No, this was already I was always like when I used to see the whole ggplot like formula thing, I was like, oh, there's so many things. Uh, yeah. Kind of clicked, at least the first two, three lines clicked. So I was like, yeah, so this is just, this is why it's called a grammar of graphics. So you just add layers after layer. And the if you add it till here, it will make a graph till here. So if you give just the data, it will just put a blank. You know, because you haven't added any geom functions or any layers to it, so you won't see anything. Uh, but I think in the exercises, uh, it will become more clear if you do the exercises. So we have total seven uh, in this grammar of graphics. There are total seven, right, in number? Yeah, I mean, it can be more than seven, but I've, I've just shown you seven of them. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, I think these seven is also quite a lot to add you might not even need all of them okay. it just depends what you want with your uh, visualization you know cool. but you can always add just a new layer of it and using the plus sign and then also make sure that you always uh use a different a new line from here to so you use the plus sign here and then you start a new line a different function so if you have to use the, then a different one, so don't start after the plus sign. You always use a new line, so it's easy to read them. Yeah. Okay, so let me go. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, so these are the exercises with the, uh, the questions and the answers. So um, how, what's the time now? Okay, I'm uh, going. So the first few exercises are quite easy, like, you know, it's just, they say uh, like here. So you use the, you can bring your tidyverse, you know, library, uh, using the library, you can implement the uh, tidyverse uh, package here. And then, what's the first question? One ggplot data equal. So this is the first question. So you see, you, because we only give data equal MPG, so it didn't create any graphics here. It just created a blank. And it say, the question is that, um, why you don't see anything here? Because we didn't give any layers was specified with GUN function, there were nothing is drawn. And then, the other questions are quite basic, like how many rows in the MPG data and how many columns. So you just use N row or N column. So these are just used for, uh, you know, that's the number of rows and the number of columns um, in the data. This is another way to, easy, to quickly look at the data, the glimpse function. Mm -hmm. So you just use glimpse and you, you give the data uh, frame name. And it will just give you like, you know, what's, what variables are in the column and uh, what is the type of there, like if it's a character, uh, you know, or the integer type, what is the type or double, you know, the different types of variables in the columns. So this is one easy way to use to look at the, your data. And then next question is, what does the DRV variable describe? So you can just use the, you know, the help MPG, and it will just show you, you can see here, DRV is a type of drive train where F equal front wheel drive. So I think it's always good to understand what this means before you make 
you know any prompts or any of your data to under to understand read the documentation like the different variables name and what they mean so it's always good to to understand first um, and then it's just this, yeah uh, go on this function, excuse me yeah this Sorry? function glimpse um yeah I, I i i can't remember the other function which one is that that is used to see the data um, apart from glimpse Think, or uh, you can just maybe structure it, uh, okay. yeah yeah the str as well or you can even if you just use mpg like this so it will give you uh, you know mm. what are the names and their uh, what type of variables they are but i think the str function as well or summary i, I, I don't know no summary i think it is but yeah I like, I like i like glimpse better it's more organized than str okay. yeah so then uh, this is just creating a scatter plot so you just use yum underscore point and it says uh, what happens if yeah. if you make a scatter plot of class versus drv why mm -hmm. is the plot not useful yes so do you want me to go through this question you everyone i mean yeah, yeah i can go i mean why is it not useful because i have tested it and i'm not sure why it's not useful Okay, so yeah, okay, so this is this is not useful because these are categorical variables, you know, there are different categories of the class of cars. So, so scatter plot is not useful for categorical variables. Like you, it, it doesn't tell you. Uh, I have given an explanation here as ah, well. Okay. So when you net this document here, I'm sure you all will be able to do it like net and then you can net it to an HTML document. Ah. It will be very easy to read like now here, these, these will create different numbers here, these DRV in this text. But this is like to show you like how many, what is the, the length of these unique points of the DRV. So if you do that, so there are three DRV points, you know, variables, different yeah, points. Neha has a question in the chat. She is throwing something so that you, maybe we can attend to her. In the chat, how do I access her? Oh. Yeah, hey, uh, no, it's okay. Uh, you guys can continue, but I ran into an error where I'm not able to run my GG plot. So uh, the first line will run and the second line does not, wait, which is just literally the first plot in the Oh, here. Okay. So did you, did you uh, bring the tidyverse or ggplot you use library? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then, I use, uh, yeah, tidyverse, I use ggplot and then I put ggplot data equals mpg and that worked. So I, they, like a plot came, like a blank plot came. Yeah. And then when I tried to run the next line, I got this error, which I pasted earlier and I'm not really sure what it is. Normally I, I would just figure it out. What, you mean the next question and you tried these ones? No, the next line. So if I do geom point mapping x equal display y equal something, it doesn't work. Wait. Uh, okay. Did you put it in the aesthetics? Um, sorry, just a minute. Okay, let's, you, can you maybe look at this one here? Did you use like this aesthetic equal, you know, one variable and then y equal then and then u plus geom underscore point. So you can use it this way or you can use G, ggplot and mpg and then plus and then on the next line you can use, I mean, there are different ways to do it, but they are just all, uh, they will create similar things. But I think, can you see my screen? If you just copy, I mean, look at it this and use it, then it should work. Give me a second. Let me copy it and see if it works or not. Uh, MPG, comma. It should work. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Right here. But this this uh, graph create no, nothing useful, but it yeah. still create a graph. Yeah. Okay. So why is it? all like in a different order like i mean I, in the end it all works which is great but then but even your code should work it doesn't work for me oh so do, you, do you install the uh, ggplot too you load it uh -huh. pretty sure you do oh no it works it works 
It worked, yeah, okay. Finally. <laughs> Why didn't it work for me earlier? That's what I want to know. But anyway. You were, there were some commas or something back and forth, okay. So, okay, we were here at this question that uh, when you make a plot using class versus PRV, yeah. And why is this plot not useful? So as I was talking that, uh, because this is a categorical variable. So scatter plot are not useful for categorical variable. They are not mostly useful for like continuous uh, variable. Okay. Because there, there are different categories. So it, it's not useful for that. And then I think I have given some explanation here. Uh, because you see there are like uh, in categories the data is you know classified into different categories a small number of uh, categories so it only creates a few points here uh, which is not useful uh, by looking at it and um, yeah so if you count here if you say count equal mpg so you will have like, the different classes have different number of variables, but this graph won't tell you like you here, compact and DRV4 is 12 variables, but we can't tell from this graph, so that's why it's not useful. Okay. If you use geom underscore count, mm -hmm. then it will tell you like how many, these the size of these uh, circles, like here is about 50 so this is the biggest one so is it useful this, one? i mean this is just to look i mean this is still not useful like yeah. as i said because this is categorical variable this is uh, i was just wanted to show you like there are uh, more than one points like this graph you will not able to tell you how many points are there mm -hmm. between this and that but if you use the count then you can see that there are more than one but even, even this is just to show how many points are there. It, it still, it's not useful because it's a categorical variable, so we can't use scatter plots for that. Um, oh, this is uh, one of the thing I was talking about earlier on. Like here, they have given color equal blue, but they're saying why the points are not blue, because the color is inside the aesthetics. And when you give that inside the aesthetics, it, uh, you see, it's including within the mapping arguments as such, it is treated as an aesthetic, which is a mapping between a variable and a value. So the QG, the geom point think that this is another variable in the data set. We have given it inside the aesthetics. So we have given X, Y, this is variable in the data, and this is variable as well. So it treat the blue as well as a categorical variable. So it created the blue there, but nothing is blue. So if we want to create the correct graph, then we can use this here outside the aesthetic. See, we put a comma here and we put color equal blue and then we run this, then it will create the, the correct graph like, you know, the, this will be color blue. Is that clear to you guys? Yeah, cool. Here the, here, the color equal blue was inside the aesthetic. That's why it didn't work. It has to be outside. So after the first bracket, you can put a comma and you say color equal blue, and then it should work. Um, okay, I think that this is quite basic that it says that which variables are categorical and which are continuous. So you can just even using the glimpse function will tell yeah. you like, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, on top of each column that which mm -hmm. one is categorical and which one is continuous. Okay. But you know, I have given the answers here anyway. So when I share this, uh, you guys can see it here. Like this one is categorical, this is yeah. integer. Okay. And you know, again, the glimpse function here. Um, so all the ones with character are the ones that are categorical, right? Yeah. And in this case, DBL yeah. and int are in, uh, not categorical, right? Yeah, these are the integer one is uh, kind of discrete, okay. but we can just count them as continuous here. Although uh, 
mean, they are not actually continuous, but they are discrete. They have different values. But uh, just for the simplicity, yeah, we can just count them as categorical and continuous. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the other question? Size. Okay, they're all just extra. This is extra information for that question. So when I share this, then you guys can, uh, you know, go through and then. So it's a okay. The next question is what happens if you map the same variable to multiple aesthetics? Okay, so if we here, for example, we use displacement as in the x axis and we are saying that also use it as a size so let's see what happens okay so okay so it's not to both location right and the color and also we have given here hwi yeah. we have given okay. it to y and we have given it to color uh, the code will work it will create a plot but it's not a really good one because um, Mapping a single variable to multiple aesthetic is just kind of redundant. Uh, and in most cases, you guys should avoid using, uh, you know, multiple aesthetic. So, because here it doesn't tell us much, you can use one or the other. Okay. If you want to see how, what are the biggest, you know, data points here, then you can put the size if you want to know the size of the different, like which one is uh, have more variables, uh, more point data points in the data, which variable, then you can put that variable in the size. And then the size of the circle will tell, you know, how many data points are there for that variable. Okay. Or some, or if you want to use the color, then you can just put that in the color variable. So I have a question in the pre presentation we had like a paint was it in position that we had a cut that was assigned to different so yeah, in, colors, yeah. yeah so in that stack bar we can do that which wasn't really also useful so in aesthetic also it's not really useful to assign multiple uh, variable to different aesthetic right yeah yeah, that's true. I mean, it's, it's just redundant. If you give multiple uh, variables to different aesthetics, mm -hmm. you give Y here and then you give it to color as well. So if we, yeah. So you can see here, it will create a graph, but it's just not useful that you are showing two kind of different legends for the same thing. Yeah. Cool. And then what's the next one? What does the stroke aesthetic do? What shapes does it work with? Okay. So the stroke is, uh, it changes the size of the border and shape. These are field shapes in which the color and size of the border can differ from each other. Okay, let's, let's look at this example and it will make sense. Yeah? I think in, in, in the example there, if I'm to look at this graph, uh, this one yes yes the graph you have right now in, in, in the in the plot pen it should make so much the point would be so much stronger if instead of using the display for the size we're still using highway i mean it's a really really horrible graph but, yeah. yeah but this is uh just to show you as an example yeah yeah, yeah. you can change you can play with different variables uh i i have to do this like you know quite quickly i have other my own work as well but i mean yeah, no, i was just thinking like oh god why why would i want to do that <laughs> yeah. yeah but it's just the question you know yeah. so you can change it i mean they will give you a grounding into the basics and then you can play if you got time with it so yeah go ahead and change the different variables so here is the question is about stroke aesthetics what shape does it work with and then it hand to use geo underscore point okay so let's use it as an example so stroke equal five okay 
So, okay, I think it changes these, uh, you know, the border of the circles. If, uh, if, I, if you change it to, for example, four, yeah, then it will be smaller. If you change it to seven, okay. yeah. So it's just kind of the, you know, aesthetic, the appearance of these different points. And you, this is something you just got to, um, you know, memorize it, or you have to just know about it, like how it, uh, when to use. And if you are not sure, you always use the help function and then you will understand uh, what it actually does, you know. But um, it's just the geom underscore point and in shape. So there are different shapes, you know, like, and they go different numbers. I think there is are like a table in the book. Like if I change it to 22, then it will be, become squares. And if you change it to 21, then it becomes circles, yeah? And then color and then fill, what fill do you want inside this circle? You can change it to red if you want, and then you want to, you want to change the size. You can give a different number. And uh, you know, the border of this circle, that's that the stroke function actually just control the borders of these, that's, that's the answer for the question. So, but I give you an example as well. Yeah. So. Um, uh, in which sense do we use stroke in a meaningful way? It just depends on what, uh, how much space you got and how many points are there, you know. Okay. How do you want to display it to your users, you know. Okay. It's just the size, there's nothing special about it, you know. Uh, like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, the commonest thing I've seen to, uh, where, where people have used stroke is if you want to highlight just a few a, a category of points by just their 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 edges or stroke yeah. in this case. So you, you could use it with that. Yes. So then you say what the next question is: What happens if you map an aesthetics to something? other than a variable name like aesthetic color equal. Okay, so you kind of give like a, um, uh, a yes or no, it becomes like a logical, like you say that, okay, like I think it's as Alan, that's what he meant. Like you say that you want only to show those color uh, where the display is yeah. less than five, yeah? So yeah, you, yeah, so yeah. So if you use that, then, this is what we get, but uh, in this case, the result is display less than five is a logical variable which takes value true or false. So there will be some which might have a displacement less than five and some more than five, but it will only uh, display the points where displacement is less than five because we have given now the uh, logical operator of that. Yeah. So you see the displacement here, true or false. So this color one, these are the one which have the displacement less than five here, you can see. Oh, sorry, I think I did something. Yeah. And uh, over here is above five. Okay. So then the next so question just, is- oh, 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 just, just to interrupt. So just, just, just to mention, we have done now so far one hour, and oh, uh, okay. we, 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 might, we might need to decide how to continue, maybe uh, because we plan to have one hour always, but if, if someone yeah. wants, wants to leave, um, it, it, it might be fine, or we might just uh, stop here. I, I don't know, what, what do you guys want yeah, to Yeah, I mean, we can stop here and I'll share this RMD file. And uh, you guys can have a go at it. You can use it in our studio and you can use it in HTML as well. So it will create a nice HTML uh, document for you, which is easy to read. So you can read that uh, document and you can use it also in the uh, studio to practice on the, the code with the code. 